What is up, Badger fans? Justin here on a Friday night watching the Washington and Oregon Pac-12 championship game and coming to you to discuss the Wisconsin Badgers linebacker recruiting from the period of 2019 through 2023. I'm going to dive into this a little bit. We'll kind of take a look at the data and see what it's been telling us a little bit about have we been under recruiting? Have we been over recruiting? We'll, we'll take a look at it and we can kind of get an idea of what, what to or how we feel about what's been done here over the last five years. Um, this is going to be pre fickle, um, minus the couple of guys that snuck in, like Christian Allegro in the last class. Um, but we'll dive into that a little bit. And here we go. Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh my God. Game analysis. Touchdown Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Thanks for joining us and on Wisconsin. Hey guys, once again, I'll lead this off real quick with just the, the regular things we need to touch on. Uh, once again, you want to check us out, check us out on either wherever you download your podcasts. Otherwise, you can check us out on YouTube if you want to see the video. Uh, you can subscribe to, on there if you could like it, like the videos too. We'd appreciate it. It helps us with the uh, logarithm. That'd be great. Uh, if you want to email the show, feel free. It's thebuckyreport at gmail.com. Otherwise, if you want to interact with us on Twitter or X or whatever they want to call it, it's just at the Bucky Report. And at, if you want to reach out to me directly, I'm Bucky Report JJ. But we'll dive into this real quick. The data for this particular position is actually really interesting to me. It's one of the few positions that I look at, and we can kind of say that we've been from a composite standpoint, roughly we're we likely need to be if we want to be competing for some of the bigger things that we want to as a program. The composite average between 2019 and 2023 in the recruiting has been a 0 0.8830. And that is pretty much where we want to be between 0.88 and 0.9 overall. If we want to be hopefully stocking the room with the type of players that we want during that period of time, we had 21 total commits, seven of which are no longer with the team. Uh, that includes Tristan Monday, who transferred out to ASU, Isaac Ham, who never enrolled, Jake Retzlaff, who gave up football due to injury, Ayo Adabogan, who is no longer with the team, Malik Reed, who transferred out, Spencer Lytle, Lytle, Lytle I'm sorry, who was with the team pretty much most of his career up until this, this spring, and then Skylar Myers, who has basically had a cup of coffee with the team for like three weeks before transferring out. Um, of that, I would say two guys were total hits in our in that 21 recruits. I would say the big ones that we look at would be clearly Nick Herbig and Leo Chanel. And overall, we had, I would say, what I would call eight rotational pieces that have been in this group. Now, the quality of which we can kind of I mean, we could dive deeper into that. I don't want to sit here and and say that just because a guy's in a rotation means that he's a quality starter or quality depth piece, but they're guys that have found a way to be on the field. And then overall, we've had six composite four stars out of the group. Um, the big ones being uh, Isaac Ham, TJ Bowlers, Daryl Peterson, uh, Nick Herbig, Caden Johnson, and Spencer Lytle. So... As you can see, one of the big ones that one of our two hits, what we would call guys that have are, have been clearly above average starters, Leo Chanel was one of them, and he wasn't even – he's actually rated below our average recruit ranking for this position. Um, we're going to dive real quick into what I'm kind of seeing here, which is I'm seeing mostly an issue with our evaluations. It seems like we just missed a lot during this period. We have a lot of guys who had a lot of physical talent coming out of high school, and for whatever reason, it just hasn't really translated to the field. Um, the big guys that we saw coming in that I think everyone thought was the next wave after Herbig was clearly the the Daryl Peterson, Caden Johnson, and Caden Johnson came in with Nick Herbig. So that was, you know, he was in that same group. We were really high on him. He was a four-star kid out of Minnesota, and it just never seemed to click for him to be able to get on the field and be a productive player. Um, he's in the two deep, but hasn't really done more. He's kind of just been a guy. Um, I would say Daryl Peterson was a guy who just 
put up eye popping stats in, in high school and it just hasn't translated. Um, one of the things I've noticed with the outside linebacker group, I'm going to talk about them here first. We seem to get a lot of tweeners. We're getting guys who are in that six, two or fringe six, three range who maybe aren't super long, aren't super explosive, but are good athletes. And the issue we're having is these guys just don't seem to have quite the burst or quite the power or quite the athleticism to be able to be a kind of dominant and really cause problems for tackles. So they can make plays like Peterson had four and a half sacks this year, but he's not a guy who is winning quickly. He'll eventually win. And the other part that I've had an issue with in terms of Peterson is that it just seems like if he doesn't beat you with his initial move, he kind of tends to give up a little bit. The motor just doesn't stay hot. Um, so really the biggest aspect with this group, if we wanted to move forward, I would say outside linebackers, finding some length and some twitch. They need to get some guys who can really run at that position and guys who are capable of having some length and ability to kind of maintain that separation from a tackle so that they can't get into their bodies. Um, if they could do that, you know, we've seen how that, well that works. Nick Herbig, incredible first step. And he's not a huge guy, but he's so quick and athletic that he's able to get around tackles before they can really set up. Um, that's exactly what they kind of need to get back to. We need more speed on the field, and we need guys that can cause problems for tackles and get, the, get them out of position. Um, as far as inside linebackers go, it's not far off with that either. We really struggle with the athleticism at that position, and it shows, especially in coverage. Um, the clear differentiator in that group, we had three guys that were starters this year. Mema Nangjameta, uh, Jordan Turner, and obviously Jake Cheney. And those three guys are not bad athletes, but they're not overly quick, and they're not guys who are capable of they don't have the frames to be able to just physically start mauling people. Um, there, there's no Leo Chanel there. Um, and what we're seeing is that these guys tend to get swallowed up a little bit. Um, I think the scheme change really made these guys struggle in terms of being able to process and diagnose what's going on. And it, it showed because they didn't seem to be able to be really follow their instincts this season. Um, we noticed instantly when Christian Allegro started getting reps out there, the the burst in athleticism with him. That, to me, is the type of guy you need to see going forward. Now, obviously, he's kind of a uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? He's kind of a unicorn. Uh, you don't find many 6'4", 225 freshman linebackers that can run a 4'6". But you're looking for guys probably in that 6'2 to 6'4 range. In, in the middle, you're probably looking 6'2", 6'3", maybe, that are in that 210 – 225 range and can really run and you're hoping that you can build up the body a little bit to, to carry it with them i think we kind of got undersized at that position and it's okay to be undersized if you have guys that have the speed and athleticism but we don't have those guys and that's really been a struggle this season because we don't have guys capable of making linemen uncomfortable with their their athleticism and it's shown because they're not beating guys to the spots and I think it's a big part of why we saw the regression this year in, in run defense. There was no Keanu Benton who was winning at the point that allowed these guys to run free. So now they have to do a lot more of their own work in the, in the new scheme. So because of that, I think that's something we need to see changing going forward. We need to see more athleticism there. I think that the, in the new scheme, it feels like there's less read and react with these guys. They have more, more of a specific uh, key that they're supposed to be going on and with that, they need to be very instinctive and, and process very quickly and hit the hole coming downhill. And if they don't, that they can get kind of washed out on plays. And we saw that more a lot this season, either guys picking wrong holes or getting washed out because they just didn't process quickly enough to get in the correct position. Um, so that's the big thing here. The big thing here for me is athleticism and speed needs to be added to this group. And I think that that will make a big difference. It doesn't matter what the recruiting ranking is. It's those are the traits that we need to get in that room so that we can kind of shrink the field a little bit and cause more of an athletic issue for other teams. I think that we're capable of doing that. And I actually really like the staff's evaluations. Allegro is a promising guy right off the bat. And I really like the two guys coming in this year in Anelu Lafayette and, and uh, Heiberger. Those two both are athletic freaks. Um, Heiberger probably more so in terms of like being in that 
Christian Allegro mold. He's more of an outside linebacker type. Similar build, though. Really can run. 4'6", explosive. Anello Lafayette is a little bit smaller. A little, not quite the length that we have with others, but it has an incredible motor and a guy with a really good burst off the edge. I actually expect him to be a guy who plays early. I think that he's played at a high level of football where he's been, and I expect him to be out on the field hopefully this season in either as a starter potentially even, or I think he's a guy who can get slotted in for pass rush packages. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if there's any of these guys that you think I'm being too harsh on, if you think there's guys that – something that we need to change or something that we need to target more so to get this group up. Or if you think that maybe the range that I have here is wrong and we actually need to be higher, let me know. But yeah, this is my thoughts on this. I think that we're in a good area in terms of composite. I think we just need to do a better job of evaluating what we want to look for in terms of athleticism and length. But you guys let me know what you think. All right, later guys. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin.